What's up, everybody? It's your favorite reason for the season's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the fans hobby, Purple God Armor MB11B upgrade. So this is why we looked at that older piece yesterday. We looked at it so that we could then look at this and apply it to it. It'd be a little bit more of a refresher in our minds what the original piece was about. Plus we get to show off the inverse transformation on the channel. So there is a reason for the season. There is a method to the madness. Once again, this is on loan to me from Joel W who is a tremendous resource and I owe him a ton of gratitude. But that's not the only thing there's a ton of with this. There's a ton of accessories. Let's get started. So he comes with this old big monster of a gun. You have this handle here that can slip down and then this one adjusts as well. Uh, this is for different things than this, right? And he looks kind of ridiculous holding it due to size, but uh, power master wise, it works great. Uh, gold paint, silver paint, silver paint, go silver and gold. In addition, we have the weathering, just like was on the other piece, and it's done beautifully. No issues. This will peg in to this cylinder piece right here at the back of the truck mode. It is a tight fit. There is paint, so be mindful. He'll hold the gun also with the ridge system like Make Toys usually does. Power baser can hold the gun the same way. The cannon can also mount onto his shoulder and then articulate up and down and is into these little plugs there, but it is a tight fit also. He comes with these two missiles. We have the kind of fans hobby standard tampo paint it's done beautifully and then we have the silver paint here these will load in and once they are there is a button here if you watch this little square right there you'll see it pop out so one if it's pushed out on this side it is locked if it is pushed out it, the same bump will appear on the other side and then you can fire the missile he comes with two swords. They are painted beautifully. We have the gunmetal and the silver, both metallic, and then we have the black and purple metallic there. The broadsword element will flip down, as well as this piece will extend, which would be good enough, honestly, but then this piece, if you put pressure on it, and it does take a fair amount of it, will extend another piece, and now you have a pretty uh, kind of gnarly sword. You know somebody still comments every now and then saying I don't know how to pronounce sword properly. They'll also clip in with these two tabs to these corresponding blocks here and I think you probably want it this way. Once again, a little bit of a tight fit due to the paint, but it is there. Be mindful, don't scratch your paint. I'm only gonna do the one just for the sake of showing it. He'll hold that sword just fine with the ridge system like Make Toys usually does. You can also tab the sword into his side here and he can have it sort of, you know, holstered, which is nice. Power Baser can hold the sword the same way. He does come with two swords. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. He comes with three of these bad boys, three headmasters. I don't know anything about this character. The Japanese stuff kind of, uh, I lost interest in it. I tried to watch it, it just like, it wasn't for me. And I don't even know if it's in there because I made it about halfway or maybe a quarter way, maybe an eighth of a way through the super god mask, whatever that super god, whatever that thing was. And I was like, nope, I'm out. But I did watch the headmaster show. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't remember him being in that. So these are the three options. There are subtle differences and expressions between these two, and then obviously the yellow versus the red, and then the crests are, are different on the brow, and then this one is like kind of a more feminine look. There are a couple different things about these. I'm gonna show you the transformation of one, and then I'm going to show you the difference with the other two, but they are beautifully painted with the silver and gold, and then the red as well. It looks good. Forgive the paint on my hands, by the way, I just finished up a diorama, which will be uh, the showing of, will be on Patreon here starting soon. So you take off the kind of brim of the helmet, and then you disconnect the legs from the back and pull them down. Uh, I. I have a tendency for them to pop off the ball pegs. It's the second one I've done. Uh, but you get this fella. You got ball pegs here at the shoulders. You get out to there, so nothing special. You get a swivel all the way around. You do get an elbow hinge that gets you about 90 degrees. I say this, give it to them. Ball pegs for the hips that get you too far sometimes. Out to there. 
the knee bends all the way for the full range. We do have purple and silver paint on there as well as red paint for the eyes. So there's a lot of detail and stuff in here. Does the head swivel? It does. So that's kind of the bread and butter of what these guys are. They all kind of transform the same way. The helmets just pull off. And this one is actually misleading because the other ones show like there's a purple peg here that it kind of slides on. So that one doesn't. I guess it's not a purple pig. It's just misleading. So all three of them do pull off. I thought there was a subtle difference, but it looks like they all go the same way. Those three fellows will store in here. This connection here is super hard to break. Uh, so I suggest taking this piece off, which I'll show you how to do when we start transforming it in order to get it. But once you have it, then you can lift this up. And there are three places in here for your three little friends. And you just kind of have to painstakingly you know, apply them until you have all three and then you can close this all back up and then you can even see them in the windshield and that's a nice touch. Also inside of the cab, these little notches here will keep tension on the helmets if you have the bot stored in here as well. He comes with this alternate head for the combined mode. The nice thing about it is you can extend the ears and raise this crest up. The ears are already extended. Actually, the crest might be up as well. It is. Um, which is going to make it look better. You do have to unscrew this one, which is a good assembly option. However, I'm not going to go through the trouble uh, because I don't want to strip a screw or cause any potential damage as this doesn't belong to me. But the gold paint, it's inside of the expansions here, like from where these ears expand, you know, and uh, it's on the crest, the silver paint and the red metallics of so the eyes look good as well. I do feel like the eyes still sit a little low. I would have wished them to sit up a little bit better, like more in line with the gold on the ears here. Now the beauty of this thing is supposed to be that it's like a giant gimmick, right? So we're not gonna break gimmicks down piece by piece, but we're gonna talk about them as we go. So you can flip this piece up here and have this facing so that the bar is down, like the open notch is facing down. Then take your truck and open it up and these two holes here will fit around this peg, which is a little strange because it doesn't look like it should. But let's see here, we gotta get it lined up and it's a little tricky to do in the camera. There, so there, and you know, let's back her out a bit. I mean, it's goofy, right? You know, and it doesn't stay in extremely well. Uh, but, you know, posed or a picture or anything like that, you, you'll be able to get away with it. Now, if you take the same hitch and turn it around 180, take your trailer and slide the middle piece into that ridge and now you have it connected to that let me show you that and there it is it is huge huge and goofy you know but it, it does work and i got this a little let me just make sure that you know like the whole thing will move you know it's it's just like you gotta have the space to display this but it, it's cool that it works right that was the point and then there's tiger tracks for a comparison and here it is kind of in truck mode and I mean it looks goofy right proportionately it rolls like a champ I'm not sure what this you know I know this is based on something I'm not sure what they've kind of taken liberties with if anything these do rotate up and down a bit your gun if it's plugged in will rotate up and down a bit ton tampo paint gold paint the weathering paint more tampo paint on top the purple the silver and gold the chrome like it's just they really did paint these things like I like to see fans hobby make moves like that. It's it's good. We got the translucent windows here with the crack in it. I do think the crack is too thick. It makes it look cartoony as opposed to kind of more realistic. And then we had the translucent here, more tampo paint there. There's some kind of chrome detailings down there. Like really beautifully decoed, you know, and clean underneath. And yeah, I will say it does have an issue kind of staying together. You probably saw that a bit. Not the biggest deal in the world unless you're flipping it upside down and stuff, but there it is with Tiger Tracks. Okay, so let's start the transformation process. As you manipulate this thing, it starts coming apart anyway, so it won't be hard, but you do need to break it down into pieces. So there's two tabs here on the side. They release these two tabs on the side of this. You can set this aside. You can set these aside and it's funny, they suggest pulling this piece out first. This is actually the piece that stays secured in the best. So it doesn't matter what order you do it in, it's just easier for me to do it this way. And then you're left with these four pieces. So let's start here. We gotta break this connection and separate these pieces. They slide. So that's what was giving me trouble. <laughs> Good thing I didn't break it already. 
All right, so get the foot out, get the heel out. This entire section slides out with the panels on it. That'll allow you to slide the wheels in, and then you can fold this down. This comes back around on itself, and that tabs forward. And then let's take the sword off, shall we? And then bring up this section and untab the foot, slide it towards the middle. You got one leg done. We'll try to do it a little smoother here. Foot, heel, slide the panel over. This panel slides over as well. I'm not sure if I realized that. Slide this up, that down. This section here folds, let's see, down and then around. It's pretty intuitive because like the colors kind of have to match up and stuff. And then slide this up and I feel like, oh yeah, and then untach or detach the foot rather, slide it towards the middle, legs are done. For the hands or lower arms, just detach them. Uh, you can play with the fingers however you want. And you have to bring this gun up a bit just to release this tab here to allow it to slide on. So just make sure that these are up and out of the way and you're good here. And then you have this piece which does eat me up. It'll become a little bit more apparent as to how it works once you have it sort of in the right place because it's, you know, it'll start to anatomically make sense. But just get this up and out of the way. Uh, I think like this. Like I said, it's hard for me to remember until I have it in place. Bring the shoulder out and you want to extend the bicep and so you can already tell it's going to be back here. Okay. And then let's see, bring the head up. It's hard for me to, there we go. And then this will slide on this bar here. And that'll form the front half of the head. This piece comes down and locks in there. And this piece comes out. And this piece comes down. And like I said, like I, I might, as I get it closer together, you know, I'll be able to kind of sort this out a bit better. But for right now, this will be able to at least get us started. So bring the wing out bring the shoulder out, extend the bicep, bring out the back half of the head, slide it over and around, and now we can start putting them together. So line up, there's like four or five tabs here that have to go together. Line them up the best you can, and then connect the head it is interesting how they engineered this, where it all works. You know, the way swivel works, et cetera, et cetera. All right, then you have to add the back on. Where this comes down and kind of bumps out, that needs to slide into these two notches on either side. It's, it's where they suggest to kind of start, but you see that? That's what you're looking for. Let me get you zoomed in on that. Right there. That's what you're looking for. As you have it lined up, you kind of need to get to pull the shoulders slightly out of your way in order to get the rest of it locked in. And as you can see, definitely possible. You know what I mean? It's not the hardest thing in the world, but the shoulders do need you do need to kind of pull them against the plastic in order to kind of get it nice. And then you need to tab the wings in. They tab in to the silver notches here on the side. And that's the orientation. So flipped out, screw, screw the inside and then straight. So on this side, flipped out, screw, screw inside of the flap, straight. And that's what you're looking for. Then you want to attach the legs. There's a little cover here that slides up and down. Make sure it's down and it basically combiner wars on. And then on the back, you just slide it up to lock it in. And we can do that on the other side as well. You want the wheels on the outside. Make sure your little flap is back, slide it on, move your flap up, and now it's connected. Okay, for the arms, you want to slide it into place 
Once it's into place, move your gun down. That tab will press and move this other tab in. If you look on this side, you can kind of see you're putting pressure here and it creates this bar to kind of move out. So let's make sure we have the right orientation and we'll show the other one. So we're sliding it into place, folding the gun down and that moves it over and locks it. Very smart stuff. I'll clean it up, we'll take a look at it. So let's talk about him. He is light and hollow because he's basically parts forming trailer box, right? So I don't think we should hold that against him. Head is painted beautifully. We have the silver on the face, the red metallic eyes, the metallic purple. We have the silver dry brushing done throughout for the weathering. Nicely done. The head will swivel, not the full range, but I think more than enough to get a decent expression. It'll go down to a fair extent, not really much up, but pretty well done for what it has to do. Waist swivel, you do have to watch, and there is a bit of an ab crunch as well, a reverse ab crunch. Uh, you do have to watch your flaps, but he can get around them. You just got to fold them appropriately. Once again, not the full range, but I think far enough for you to get a decent pose, no problem. Deco-wise, we have the metallic purple, metallic silver, the gold. It comes through beautifully. The weathering throughout, tremendously done. For the shoulders, we have these flaps here that'll cover down on the universal, which is also uh, ratcheted both out for 90 degrees and around for 360, so no issues there. We have a bicep swivel. We have tampo paint, gold, plus the weathering. We have an elbow. It is a single hinge, I believe, but look at the range on that, no issues. The deco wise, we've kind of talked about that before, but it is beautifully decoed with the gold and silver and metallic purples. All right, for the hands, individually articulated fingers. They are, the, the wrist itself is on a massive ball peg, so you'll be able to get the swivel and some up, down, and in, out, so no issues there. We have the thumb is on a ball peg plus a pinned uh, next knuckle. All the fingers are on a base pin knuckle, but they do articulate individually, and they have a secondary and tertiary knuckle as well. So, no issues. Only issue here, make sure the flaps are up and out of the way as you manipulate the shoulders, or otherwise you could run into some potential damage. All right, hip skirts. We have ball pegs. They'll move up and out of the way for your universals. They are ratcheted. If you get it out of the way, he won't do the full Van Dam because the wings kind of constantly... And the, and the ratchets, to be fair, aren't strong enough to hold the weight of the leg, but they will secure it for a pose, so I think it'll be good enough. Ratcheted forward and back as well, and that actually does hold the weight, so even better. Gr decent enough range on all, I don't think that you'll have any issues. Thigh swivel built into the bottom of the universal, no issues there. Plus, we have all the weathering paint and the purples, golds, etc. on the pelvis. For the knee, it is double jointed, I think. I can't tell. Let's see. No, I think it's just a single hinge, but then you have this piece that kind of covers down on the joint. So once again, nicely done and a great range. It, I don't think it's double jointed. I think it's just single jointed, just well done. Nice. Uh, then we had the gold, purple, black, silver paint done there, black on the inside, decent enough sculpt work as well. No real ankle tilt, you do get a heel tilt for additional support if you have a pose and a toe tilt down uh, and no real ankle rocker either so that is a bit of a bummer but outside of that pretty nice honestly and then there it is from the back you know pretty clean size comparison wise there it is with the power baser so about the same size he's probably a little taller i'll try to yeah so a little taller but not significantly and there he is with Magic Square Prime and a Masterpiece car. All right, so let's do the last bit. We're going to untab and take off our arms. We can then slide them on to our power baser arms and plug them back in. And you're gonna wanna do that on both sides, obviously. On the back, slide down your slides there and then slip off his old legs. There's a release button here on the side, push that. That'll allow you to slide the thigh down and then collapse the foot or the heel and then the foot. Same on the other side. Push, push, push. Ah, I did it again. Push, push. So lay them upside down and then push these side pieces out here. 
these are the part without the flap and the part without the wheels might be best. And then these two are gonna go into Power Basers feet. So he has two slots on the bottom of his feet. There we go. There's one. There's the other. You gotta split this apart. So open this up and this up and give yourself some fighting room. You can untab that. There we go. Then you gotta get this connection, which is not easy at all. You gotta get these pieces off. It's not a big deal, but you know, something to do with a little bit of caution. Flip these up and then take your other crotch piece and slide that on. And then you can kind of do whatever you want. I think they're just supposed to sit up, but you can do whatever you want. <clears throat> and then you have this piece that just slips on the front of his chest. Like that. It actually, it just stays on with friction, but it works very well. Now, this is the one that kind of eats me up. So, and it's just because I have a hard time staying oriented while, while I'm doing it. So, split this apart. You want to get the head put away. So slide that back. And that should do it. Your bicep here, I think you want it so that the elbow is going to bend towards the body. Slide that in. And then bring that around. You got to untab it from here. Then this piece will tab into there and that is it. We'll try to make that a little cleaner on this one. Slide the head in, fold it into place, collapse your bicep, bring this around. And that should fold up. I feel like a little better than that. I'll mess with it. And then Untab this, bring it back so that that tabs into that gray piece. And uh, there. Now we need to attach this. So there's a ridge in the purple piece there that's gonna clip on the side here. And then once that is in place, this will plug into there. And those are the two main components you're trying to get. Now, mine just came on tab, but just, it's not easy to do. Uh, just work until it works. Same on this side, we're going to snap that down and then peg it in. I'll clean it up, peg it in back and we'll take a look at it. And there he is. And he's huge. He's uh, gonna make an impression. That that much is for sure. He's just too large not to. I mean, I, I'm not even set up to kind of review anything sort of this massive, to be honest. But um, yeah, look, there's other stuff you can do with the guns. I have them behind the shoulder. You can put them on the wings. You can put them on the backpack facing up. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with it. As you can see, I put the guns on the bottom of the feet. You could probably look for other alternatives for that too, into the shoulders, whatever the case may be. There's options. This is just what was in sort of the promotional pictures on the front of the box so it's what I chose to go with because I don't know enough about the character to kind of get froggy with him. I should also say articulation wise nothing really changes. Obviously the arms can't move back because the backpack's there now. The ankle rockers still work fine because the power armor isn't really getting in the way of any of the engineering. It's all of it is relying on the initial engineering of the power baser and that works pretty well. So it's cool. It all kind of works. And size comparison wise, there it is with Magic Square Prime and a Masterpiece car. So just about twice the size, which is to say about a head shorter than a quarter scale Burt Ward, which was a gift given to me by Robert D. And I think it's, uh, I think he told me it's what makes a house a home. 
Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. It is so large and everything kind of has to be fit in perfectly. And since the power baser already has trouble kind of locking in perfectly, it relies on that a good bit. And as a result of it having to interlock completely perfectly, it's not very solid. As you manipulate it, as you work it around and so forth, pieces do come untabbed, unhinged, etc., etc. The instructions aren't great either. And the truck mode is kind of simple. And, and I don't mean that in terms of complicated. I mean that in terms of simple looking. But I'm not really mad at that. And for all I know, it has some sort of base lore to it that I'm just not aware of and don't care about. Because the way it integrates into everything, I can kind of give it a pass. There's also some articulation limitations in just the robot mode, mainly because of the parts forming elements that are used in order for it to be assembled into the God armor or whatever, the God bomber mode. But the ankle rockers do stick out as a significant limitation. Moving on to the positives though, there is plenty. The one thing about this that really struck me is just how fun it is to kind of assemble it into something else like there is something nostalgic about that there's something that takes me back to my childhood in regard to that of how it all comes apart and all comes back together and makes something greater than it once was and it does so pretty well there's something about that that's not lost on me it's big it's blocky it's clumsy but it kind of reminds you of the proportions of bigger bots when you were a kid with smaller hands there's a charm there that i get it has a super strong presence wings a whole ton of guns and a figure this big is always going to do that but this one does it well, and because it's painted so well, it really pops and shows itself off. Tampo paint, metallic paint, flat paints, glossy paints, translucent plastics, all of that comes through in a big way and really makes this thing pop off a shelf and off of a review stand. Also, the fact that the entire front of the cab has that finish of silver, and that cab integrates into the center chest piece of the power bomber or whatever, the, the ultimate combined thing, it just brings a ton of attention to it, and it's good attention because it's done well. The materials are strong, blocky plastics that feel like they will hold up to any sort of play pattern or manipulation pattern or whatever. Cleans up pretty well for what it is. It's priced fairly for what it is. And the articulation is good on the self-contained unit. But what's kind of brilliant about it is that it doesn't get in any other way of the engineering of the power baser, which really allows the power baser's engineering to come through and work for the strength of both sets. Smart stuff. The other smart thing is the way those forearm things attach sliding that one slot through like it works incredibly well it's really really smart stuff it's that masterpiece moment that we kind of talk about from time to time so if you're into this character or this kind of representation of prime or you get you this means something to you then i can definitely recommend this it will work for you it is a very strong and impressive piece it's probably the best rendition of this character you're going to have for a while if not ever so it's a strong recommend for me i'm sure that the other colors work just as well i think there's a black version of it perhaps even a traditional version I'm not entirely sure but I can say with great confidence it's a well done thing the most frustrating thing about it is getting it super secured but if you really take your time and make sure it's done right I'm sure it'll pay out Whew. I need a drink thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care